Jason J. Rock Houston, and this is uh, for Chaotic TV. We're talking to my good friend, Wade Black. And Wade, we're talking to you today because um, you have a new band. So let's start off with the name of the new band and um, tell us how you came up with the name. Uh, of course, the, the band is Astronomica, as we've uh, so titled it. Um, of course, uh, coming up on uh, almost uh, 25 years of Crimson Glory. Mm -hmm. So I figured that, uh, you know, we'd uh, write a little bit on that, you know. Um, come up with some new music that's uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, great lineup. So uh, everything's looking uh, everything's looking really good for us right now. And so, um, how, um, who else is in the band, and how did the band all come together? Um, well, we had a band called War of Thrones that we went through a couple name changes and uh, kind of kicked things around a little bit, and just kind of felt like you know it was time for uh, a change. You know, time for uh, kind of revamp kind of, uh, you know, get our bearings uh, a, a little bit better. And, um, you know, we were thinking about it and we were like, well, why not call it Astronomica? You Astronomica, know? I uh, like that it's, you know, one name, it's kind of simple, um, it sounds metal, um, you know, and, and talk about the name change in the sense that um, besides the revamping, do you think um, was kind of needed to have a change the name of the band being that I mean, when you change up members, I'm sure it changes the sound drastically. Well, and of course, you know, uh, name change or, or band changes and everything like that. Members, um, it, it's always so weird because you never know what you're going to end up coming up with. You know, you try to get together with a bunch of guys that you think is going to end up working that, uh, you know, you have to end up not doing in the end. Yeah. Um, with, with this go around, you know, I had been working with my writing partner, Rich Marks, uh, which, uh, you know, we we just put together great songs. You know, we worked together for the last 10 years and uh, we just we just thought it was time for a change, you know, time for an upgrade, if you will. And, uh, you know, of course, w within this, we'll be doing uh, some old Crimson Glory. Uh -huh. We'll be doing some stuff off Astronomica. Of course, we're we'll doing some stuff off of my my past bands, Leather Wolf, Seven Witches. <clears throat> but we'll, what we're really most uh interested in right now is is our new music you know and what we're coming up with right now is absolutely stellar uh music you know you heard the clip yourself yeah, yeah. and uh it's it's just uh, amazing uh, of what we're coming up with right now well i gotta tip my hat to you because one thing i've always enjoyed about your music is you know you're always um doing something you're always progressing you're always out there um you know, nobody can accuse of you of sitting idle and doing doing nothing. I mean, um, and as far as Astronomica, you guys are working on tunes, obviously, you're writing, but um, um, what's the plan, like, to, to put out an EP for us? You're working towards a full length? We, we have an EP that we're going to release. Um, you know, we did the teaser video and stuff right now. Um, we've got full songs that we'll, we'll release, a little bit of teasers and stuff like that, but we've got a full album of uh, 11 songs that are just killer just melodic, hooky chorus. I mean, everything that you're looking for within a metal song or whatever, we, uh, you know, we, we've got you taken care of for sure. I mean, I mean, everybody's got their own definition of what metal is. I mean, um, you know, you may laugh when I say this, but I mean, I remember, you know, back in the 80s, like um, people used to refer to Bon Jovi as metal simply because, you know, he had long hair. <laughs> that band, that band was never metal. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. With, with, within, within how we grew up, yeah. You know, I mean, Exodus and, and Anthrax and, and, you know, bands, bands like that, you know, we're, we're metal. Yeah, Crimson Glory, you come from, Le uh, you know, Leather was so, I, I think um, in terms of you, people know what your, your brand of metal is. Right. Um, I'm, I'm like a, a American power metal, you know, but I've been over to Europe so much that I kind of think that it's kind of, kind of like get that uh, Euro spin on it. Yeah. Um, at this particular time, though, you know, I think honestly, uh, to not toot our own horn or whatever, I honestly think that we're coming up with some of the best stuff that I've ever written. And, uh, you know, I know people say that all the time. Oh, yeah, my yeah. God, my band, my new stuff. So good. My new stuff. So good. But but honestly, Astronomica and what we're about ready to uh, to come up with is is absolutely fantastic. And you're really people are really going to dig it. Well, you know, a guy that's got your history, you know, that's 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 really something to, to be said. And and I and I mean that as a you know compliment, because on, on one hand, you, you do have your legacy of fans that kind of um, they have a certain expectation of what they expect from you. So you have that to live up to. And the fact that if um, you can say, well, 
we're giving you something new here. It doesn't sound like, you know, everything I did before. It's something a little different. I think um, they're going to like that. Right. I, th I think so. Everybody wants, uh, for me, if I do anything of, of this nature or this style of music, that, of course, they want it to sound like Astronomica. Yeah. Um, this record's 23 years old. Come on, kids. Um, you know, everybody loves nostalgia. Everybody uh, it seems to be the, uh, the, the, the going trend right now. Nostalgia bands coming back together and, and replacing members and coming back out and stuff. And I'm all for that. I am. You know, um, I, I love that music. I love Crimson Glory. I love Leather Wolf. I love every single band that I've ever been involved with and stuff. These are my stepping stones and, and, my, and my workshops to get to where I am today. And what so, I love you know, is you I'm, don't I'm, you don't you don't hide that you don't shy away from it and say oh you know hey leave me alone I don't want to hear about Leatherworth I don't want to hear not about that's even my... not even close these are parts of my life and these are parts of of the uh, the growing that I okay. went through to get to where I am to today I'm so humbled and I'm so grateful to 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 still be here and still be relevant and still be talking with you right now I mean you you talk about those past bands like Crimson Glory and Leatherworth I mean um you know you definitely weren't um you know the original singer but you know you brought something to the band and, and whoever comes after you know they're they're adding to the story and the fact that you know um, like Leatherworth is still carrying on as you say with new members but um you know I, I like the fact that you you wave the flag so to speak for those past bands and you're saying you know you dug what I did before you know check this out this is what I'm doing now right right I you know you have to give uh past nods to to those bands you're talking about two of the most uh uh, progressive bands that were out there, Crimson Glory and Leather Wolf. I mean, who else can say that you, they sang for those two bands, you yeah. know? And the and the records that we came out with were were both stellar, you know, both chart topping in Europe as well. So, you know, all I can say is is hats off to those guys, the guys in Leather Wolf and stuff. Great job on the new record, you know. I just talked with Jeff Gayer the other day, and uh, what what a great record, you know. To whatever else that that John Drenning and Crimson Glory have going on and stuff, I wish them all of the best of luck in the entire world. I have nothing but love for all of those guys because they they you know got me to where I am today. In fact, you know the last time I talked to you about a year ago, the name of the band you were involved with is escaping me, but I know um, they released it on um, Chalice or something like that. Yeah, Chalice of Sin, Frontier Chalice. Records. Yeah. And that was, of course, released on Frontiers. Uh, will, you, will this be on Frontiers or a different label? Do you know? No, no, no. Um, I love everybody at Frontiers. I appreciate all of uh, uh, everything that they did for us. You know, Alessandro and everything. Uh, you know, we we love those guys, you know, to death. Um, but I think that with this record and stuff, we just have really huge uh, dreams and aspirations of of what we're actually looking for. You know, I, I, I actually want the fairy tale. I just don't want a little bit of it. I want to do the whole thing, you know. And, and you know, you're a very creative guy. You're definitely being the singer. You're very involved in the um, writing. And so, you know, there, there's that, that, you know, you kind of get to um, steer the ship, even though it's a band effort. I'm sure everybody, it's very collaborative. Well, you have to. It's a, It takes a band. It takes everybody within the band to make it. You know, listen, so if if my my writing partner me and rich come up with a, a song you know and we give it to the guitar player to put a lead on you know we're we're giving our child to you to, yeah, yeah. to put to, to put the coating on on the cake and the cherry on top of the cake you know it's it's ours but we're sharing it with you to make it better because it takes everybody within the band in order to make it that's why a lot of bands don't stay together period yeah and you, and you I could, did this. I did that. You know, he took my candy. He stole that, you know, sweet and sour candy. And it's just, you know, it's but anyway. and it, it kind of makes you think for a minute. Could, could you imagine if you were the guy writing the songs and you and another guy comes in and sings these songs? They're, they're still your songs in a way, but it would be maybe different, very different sounding songs. I mean, I, I heard Dave Mustaine talk in an interview once when he was forming Megadeth. Initial concept was he wanted to bring in another singer. But it got to the point after I auditioned in a number of singers that. You know what? Nobody's going to sing these songs the way I hear them in my head. You know, this I'll, I'll I'll say this to you right now. So within our band, my my writing partner Rich Marks was the bass player. Wow. We were wow. looking for a guitar player for so long, and nobody could come in and actually do what he wanted them to do on guitar. So yeah. I said, well, why don't you switch to guitar? Yeah. Which he did. He plays like George Lynch, amazing guitar player, amazing bass player, amazing you know a lot of things. But mm -hmm. uh, it's funny. 
because so now he's on guitar and now we've hired another bass player that uh, that will do uh, announcements here coming up soon that uh, that that are going on but it's just funny that how you 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 end up working it yes and and i think that um you know when you have a guy like that in the band not only involved in the writing but you know he can play bass he can play guitar maybe do more than one instrument um when you go in to record the stuff it gives him a better understanding of what everybody else in the band is doing maybe you know as opposed if he was just the bass player i do i do agree because you know you take on that creative influence of as you're writing the song as you're writing it and stuff you're thinking about where the verse is where is your bridge where's the chorus going to be you know you're thinking of this as you're writing it and stuff so it's not like such a a, a, a cluster fuck when you get together to try to record it or try to get an idea a permanent idea together so it just makes it easier, you know. In fact, you know, I got a friend who's a musician. He was telling me he started out as a bass player and he, he's a singer now. And he's like, he injured his hand. And so like he could no longer play bass. He's like, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to give up playing music. So um, I decided to become a singer. But, you know, I know you, you have to have a certain level of talent there. He says, but I, I took lessons. I got to a point where I didn't want to give up, you know, playing music. So it, right. it took me about uh, 10 years of doing it. And finally got to a point where, you know, he can go out and do gigs now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It all depends on your drive, man. It all depends on what you want to try to do. You know, Todd LaTorre from Queensryche, he started out as a drummer. Yeah. Became a, a singer. And, a and now he's doing, you know, Steven Tyler from Aerosmith, Janie Lane. Yep. Same same exact thing, man. It's it's brutal. It's brutal. Right. But we're, we're, you know, we're out here having the time of our lives right now, brother. You know, this is the best time of my entire life. Uh, we've got uh, 2024 is going to be a huge year for Astronomica. We've already got a uh, European, huge European festival that's happening right now. So we're planning on adding on to that. We're going to book a tour around that. So you guys will definitely see Astronomica tour in 2024, I promise you. Oh, well, so so this year's kind of finishing up the music and getting all that ready. Um, where where are you based at? Where's home to, uh, today? Wait. Where Where am I living? Yeah, you know where where is Oh, I'm 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 sorry. I'm in I'm in Mad Beach. I'm in, I'm at Route Six 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 in wow, Saint wow. Pete. Yeah, yeah. We wow. live close to the devil. Hey, well, man, that's that's cool for a <laughs> metal band, huh? Yeah, I and mean, you, you get accused of probably being a devil worshiper, anyways. I mean, <laughs> I think Deicide lives down here too. So, oh wow, that's that's cool. And um, you know, you 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 and I uh, have a mutual friend and um and Joe Lawson. He he's telling me that you and him go way back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've known Joe for quite a while, man. He's he's a definitely a good guy, good character. Yeah, he, he's a he's a he's a cool guy. And, and what I like, how I hooked up with him is, you know, doing these interviews. So I obviously interviewed him when he had a couple of bands, and um, and he's put the kind of his musical thing to the side. But he's really um, one of these guys that knows a lot about metal. And um, and I was interviewing one day, and um, when we were done with the interview, I, I was like, wow, this guy knows a ton about metal, you know, even more than, than what I do. I mean, he's really into everything. And and that's why we started doing this show called um, This Is Metal. We just kind of, um, you know, every couple of weeks I do a show talking about, you know, a, a metal band or something like that. And it, it's all metal and it, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, Joe's, Joe's, Joe's an awesome guy. You know, you've got to have a certain drive and stuff in order to do this. I, I've been in this music business for the last 30 years. You know, yeah. a, a lot of people probably would have quit or yeah. whatever either i'm stupid or i just like music a lot so i think it's probably well, it, it's, it's that and you got a certain certain drive and certain you know it takes a certain work ethic as you say i mean um and and um definitely you got the talent because i i think if um you didn't have the talent obviously you would never have um, gone in bands like leatherworth or crest of glory for for anybody to reach that level i mean even when you're even to be in a band where you know maybe you have a gig at the house of blues or something or or, you know, even I'm sure you played some arenas and small theater. So when you get to that level, um, you know, you, there, there's some level of talent there. I appreciate that, brother. You're, yeah. you're very nice and you're very honest. Um, you know, um, you're you're. You create what you're given, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, some people don't have a lot of range. Look at that singer from the cult. He doesn't yeah. have a lot of range or whatever, but look at what he does with his voice. It's absolutely incredible. And even you know? even even um, look at him. Like I mean, I can't remember the last time a Cole put out a new CD. But you know what? Um, if you know anything about the early '90s, uh, when when Robbie Krieger was trying to reform the Doors, that's right. the guy they got to fill in for Jim that's Morrison. Right. And why not? And yeah. why not? Yeah. I would have either got him or I would have got uh, uh, Jizzy Pearl. 
Yeah, I mean, from, not, uh, not from bad, love hate to coming in. Not a bad gig to have, you know. <laughs> it, hey, hey, it's beautiful. But you know what? Um, like I said, once again, we're having the time of our lives w with this. Um, we've got some label interests and stuff, and we're just uh, we're just beginning. Um, I've got uh, my friend Alex Yarborough has done uh, incredible artwork for uh, Cage and Three Trimmels, Three Trimmers, sorry, uh, that has uh, done the artwork and stuff. Everything um, is is geared. We're going to be done with this record soon. It is going to be released. You know, everything's going to go good because I want it to, and damn it, it's going to go good. And uh, no. Um, we just have a lot of high hopes because the music is so good. You yeah, know, I mean, of everybody that I've showed this to and stuff, they're just like, wow, man, this is great. This is great. This is great. So, you know, I've had nothing but good positive feedbacks from the music. So on that note, do you have any labels that are interested or are you, are you planning to release I do, it? I do. I can't. I can't no, talk can't about it. But that. Least... I can't even I can't even say of any of the festivals because the festivals have to get done this year before they'll release who's going to play in 2024. I got you. But got we've you. got uh, we've got everything zeroed in for uh for 24 the beginning of 24 should should look really good for the release of the record and stuff um i just i, I honestly think with with the name and everything else and everything else that's behind that i think for the festivals and the european festivals especially that they're going to want to look at us because you get the the nostalgia you yeah, get yeah. some seven witches you get some leather wolf you get crimson glory crimson old yeah. and astronomica you know you get all of that but then again you get the new music which is really 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 going to push us over into uh into the next uh but so when, when you go and do these festivals you're not opposed to throwing in like a couple of those tunes from those previous bands or you want absolutely wanna... not we're gonna do we're gonna do astronomical we're gonna do war of the worlds we're gonna do mm -hmm. i am the law from leather wolf we're gonna do metal tyrant from seven witches we're gonna do a little bit of everything yeah everybody wants to hear that nostalgia stuff i yeah, love sure. that shit yeah. i love it and that's what i go to see we feed yeah. them that and then maybe they'll they'll like our new stuff so and that's what oh, we're sure. that's what we're hoping for but the new stuff's killer though so i think that everything is going to go really smooth and see, see the cool thing about that to me is there's a certain aspect of audience that are going to know you from those previous bands they're going to know those songs but now if you, if you play some of the new astronomica stuff i mean they they may think oh well, you must be from another band he's done or they, they might find out oh no this, he's in this new band i mean i remember lars oler talked about Early on, you know, Metallic would do all these like, you know, uh, covers they would do like of all these European metal bands. And people would think in the early days of Metallica that they were playing Metallica songs. They're playing other right. people's songs. Those are know? not their songs. That's a Diamond Head song, son. Yeah. 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 Anyway. yeah. But yeah, Diamond Head. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. And, you know, and so the fact that you tell me, I, I can't really say at this point, but there are labels that are interested. I think that's another positive sign because. In this dang age, you're lucky if you even have a record deal. I mean, it's not really right. a required thing, but if you can get that interest, you know, of course, you know, a little more um, money maybe for the um, advertising to push out, and maybe a little bit for touring. Who knows? But um, I honestly think when people look at this band, yeah. they see they see the past. Yeah, they see the future with the name change and everything else that's going on and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think that it is a very, very sellable uh, thing, sure. commodity, tour, uh, merchandise, everything. I think I think that it, I, we're ready to go out right now. And I think that the songs of the new record stand for themselves. And that's what's going to be the vehicle sure. for us to uh, get where we're going. Have you guys been doing any rehearsals? I mean, as far as um, I, I'm sure you, when you're in the studio, you rehearse. But I mean... Uh like getting ready for when you do um, go out there and do some of these shows. Any chance you like would do a small club show before the big festivals? Um, well, well, of course, we're going to do some tune-up shows and stuff, work out all the bugs before we end up taking it out on the road and stuff. But uh, that's what we're trying to do in rehearsals right now. So we're trying to uh, pull it out, you know, shake the dust off of it a little bit. And uh, the, the the songs sound just like the record when we play them live. So it, we're it's going to support you, whatever you do. So, you know, you're, you're welcome back here anytime once the – songs start dropping and i just want to um say we always love what you do because you're, you're always progressing you're always pushing ahead you're not one of those guys that is hung up on the past and like oh man ah, just give up you know absolutely you know what I, I i'm just driven like i said i am so very blessed to be where i am right now today 
and uh, to be still relevant within the music scene yeah. and stuff like that. But I'm saying what we're going to come out with next is really, really, really going to be the standard of of what we've done to date. And it's really going to turn a lot of heads. And I'm really super proud of it. Excuse me for saying this, but I dare say that you're, you're the Frank Sinatra of metal in the sense that I love <laughs> the fact that you're doing it your way. You know, I mean, you could probably maybe just say, I'll, I'll look for to join it, you know, some established band, but, but I, what I, you're sticking to your, what you want to do. You know, you're, you're, you're steering your own ship. I, I appreciate that. I like that Frank Sinatra thing. Well, you know what? I have no other bands to get into because fucking Mark Lopes just took my gig in metal church. Wow. And, and Ronnie Monroe just took my gig in Vicious Rumors. So wow. there goes the two bands that I wanted to be in. So I, yeah, yeah. I, I might as well start Astronomica and do it myself. Yeah, yeah you know, Metal, Metal <laughs> Church, um, I love what they do. But, you know, one thing about Metal Church, I think why like, they've had a problem, like, you know, being more successful than what they've been is because constantly changing, you know, singers for one reason or another. I mean, um, it gets yeah, a little yeah. tedious. Yeah. Um, but I think that what they're going to come out with, with, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mark Lopes, my good yeah, friend, sure. is going to be so stellar that you guys are going to piss yourself. Hey, yeah, and, and of course, you can't you can't blame them for changing singers this time. I mean, who saw what was going to happen with um, you know the tragedy with Mike Howe? I mean, everybody, tragedy. you know, everybody was like, "Wow, I did not see that one coming." Yeah, it's 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 really sad what uh, what he went through. What a great singer, and uh, you know, I I felt bad for them and i i sent them condolences and of stuff course. and i let them know that you know of course man that's those are our brothers those are uh you know people that that we love but i do i do expect really good things mark lopes and uh ronnie monroe as uh, two of my very good friends uh, yeah, out there fact, uh, and uh, we'll always always bring the metal brother we are metal road warriors man nobody does it like we do man that's right no and, and you know in fact um speaking of metal church um I was in the process of setting up an interview with the drummer, Stead Holland, and he, he was all for it. But then he told me, we're going to have to um, we're going to reschedule for another time because he goes, the new singer just kind of went out there a couple of weekends ago and, and did an interview without, you know, checking with the manager first. And they're like, ah, don't I love anybody it. else doing interviews until the album comes out. <laughs> Isn't that so that's so funny. If, if he's ready to rock and roll. You tell Stead he owes me a steak dinner when you talk to him. I, I will do that. Yeah, I hope you'll see. <laughs> hope you'll see the video. And um, and, and then what I want to ask you as far as the recording is everybody like in the same studio, or do you do you, uh, have your own home studios where you record? Uh, my my writing partner Rich and my guitar player within Astronomica has his studio at his house. I have my own vocal booth and everything right here, so we record all the vocals here. So it's 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 contained within two different locations. Oh wow. Well, wait, as long as, as usual, I, I love Tognia. Um, so let's keep in touch and do this again. I'm serious. As, as you start dropping more songs, um, I'll reach out to you again and, and we'll do it. And, and once the album, of course, comes out or you do start doing those festivals, let me know and, and we'll do everything we can to promote Astronomica. Man, I really appreciate it. You know, it's funny because we came up with this song and it's called uh, I, I'm Wade Black Bitch. And we say that we'll stamp you with the WB so you can brag that you knew me. I like that. WB. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking Warner Brothers. <laughs> Wait, <No. what? laughs> okay, my friend, you take care. I'll, uh, Thank you, brother. Just, yeah, it's going to go probably about a week. I'll let you know once it goes up, okay? Thank you. Hey, take care. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye.